When it comes to video games, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is considered to be one of the very best games ever made. It was the first 3D Zelda game, and it was a masterpiece on the Nintendo 64. Since then, it's ended up pretty much on every Nintendo console after it, either via emulation or native ports. Notably, the game has also landed on the Nintendo Switch via the Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack service. And this is something that I've covered recently on the channel and talked about my concerns with that particular version. And as of the beginning of December 2021, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is also available as open source software, fully recreated in C by the Zelda reverse engineering team. Okay, so what does this all mean? Well, simply put, the game has had its original source code recreated painstakingly function by function as human readable C code, which when compiled will create an identical copy of a Nintendo 64 ROM image. That's pretty impressive stuff. Now, before you tell me that's cheating, the code was already available during the Giga Leak back in 2020. Simply put, this isn't the case here. This is a fully clean room project and the team behind the recreation has disclosed the method and tools used to reverse engineer the game. This means that Nintendo has no legal ground to take the source code repository offline. But they do, however, and they have before, taken down community ports, but these are still very much available if you look around. But let's go back to Zelda. This is a major milestone, and now I expect the floodgates to open up. While as of the making of this episode, there are no current ports to other platforms, I would expect the community to start looking at various ports to other hardware, and I would expect them to start appearing in the coming months. Super Mario 64D compilation ended up on so many platforms, even hardware like the original Xbox, PlayStation Vita, and Sega Dreamcast, and this is what having the source code offers. Now, of course, there are many patches and ROM hacks that are already out there for Ocarina of Time. But this opens up so many more possibilities, especially when it comes to things like performance. As it stands, it could be possible to optimize area of the code to increase things like frame rates. As we know, Ocarina of Time has a fairly sluggish frame rate, but with some clever optimization, especially around things like vector math routines, could really push the game to its limits on the N64. And we've already seen this done before, on the Super Mario 64 recompilation project with the incredible work done by Kaze Emanuar. So let's talk about how to set all this up and get it working. Now on the GitHub page, there are step-by-step -step instructions on how to compile and it's pretty straightforward. But there are a couple of dependencies. To recompile a ROM, first, you will need to provide your own Ocarina of Time ROM. This is required because we need to extract out all the asset data from the game so it can then be used in the recompile version. The developers simply cannot host any assets on the GitHub page, as this would be a copyright infringement. But essentially, what you need to do is install a Linux distribution on your machine. If you're using Windows 10 or Windows 11, then WSL2 is recommended. Then download the GitHub repository per the instructions, install the dependencies needed to compile code, and then run make setup. Now, as of right now, the only game that you can recompile is the Master Quest debug ROM, the 1.0. And what you want to do is just insert it into the OOT folder where the GitHub repo is and rename it as base ROM underscore original dot Z64. Now, what you want to do first is type make setup, and then that will go ahead and basically extract all the data, all the assets out of the game. And then once you've done that, all it is a matter of doing is typing in make, and that will now go ahead and compile the final N64 ROM. Now this will take a few minutes and it really depends on the type of setup that you have. Obviously with a you know fast i7 or an i9, it should only take a few minutes to compile. And there are different options where you can compile code in parallel as well, but it's really not that important to kind of understand how that all works really. It's just a matter of just building all the source code. So this is compiling every piece of source code and then we'll inject all the assets into the ROM and then construct the ROM itself. So now we're pretty much close to the final stage here. And as you can see, it's completed its execution. And what you can see here is it's output this 
Zelda underscore Ocarina underscore MQ underscore DBG dot Z64. And what is going on here is it's just doing a comparison with the original version that we provided and it's saying OK, which means that the checksums are identical. Now, what we can do is if we drag the ROM file that we just created into RetroArch, you can see that it loads up into the game just fine. Now, this is where the fun really begins. Now, this is the Master Quest debug ROM, so it has a specific debug menu that you can jump into. Now, as you can see, we are in the first part of the game, and this looks obviously very familiar to someone that has played The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time before. And one of the really cool things we can do now is start to really mess around with the source code. Now, the first thing that I want to do is illustrate to you guys the fog. Now, one of the things that the Ocarina of Time was criticized for on the Nintendo Switch Online was the fog was completely broken. Now, the fog is basically a function that gets set during the game and if we take a look at this gfx underscore set fog 2 call somewhere in the game we're getting the fog being set here and you can see here that it's calling set fog with the fog color as well as the near values and the far values now if we go ahead and disable the fog in other words we just set the near values to zero and the far values to zero what we can now do is jump back into our compiler and then type make and that will reconstruct a new ROM for us and as you can see it's only touched or it's only building the one function that we we modified now it also says that the checksums don't match that's because we've made a change to the original game but it still constructs the ROM image and we can still load it into our emulator so if we go back and drag the emulator or we drag the ROM back into the emulator what you'll see now is if we go ahead and go back into the first part of the game, you'll see that the fog is completely disabled. So as you can see there, we've adjusted the player height value and we've kind of pulled the camera way back now so you can see so much more of the world. It's a little bit annoying to be honest with you, but that is uh, pretty awesome that you can see so much more. Now, this is something that I just tweaked. I added plus 100 to the player height value, but if we maybe make it like minus 20 or something along those lines, we should be really up close to Link and we should see a lot less of the world so these are kind of some of the things that you can start messing around with to get a really cool different look at this game and uh, it's quite fascinating to, to play around with the uh, source code in this fashion but let's go ahead and try changing this and yes it is definitely closer it's not probably not too much more than what i had expected it to be but you can get a sense of how you can manipulate the camera positions as well you know the camera that follows link around in the game so I'm just making a quick little modification where we're just removing the skybox from the game. And at this point, I'm just messing around. You can see that there's nothing in the background now, which doesn't look particularly good. But once again, just kind of illustrating some of the things that you can do with this game. You know, we've got this kind of all nighttime scene now where there's just absolutely nothing going on. Doesn't look particularly great, especially the way it's been illuminated. Now, one thing that I want to make very clear is even though we've been able to rebuild a Master Quest debug ROM, there are still 17 versions of Zelda that still need a lot of work to be done. So in other words, this project is far from complete. And this was also confirmed to me by one of the developers known as Fig. He let me know that there is still a lot of work to do, especially in the documentation as well. Now, I think ultimately what I've shown you guys is just scratching the surface of what you can do. I'm not suggesting that anyone's going to be playing around with the camera or the skybox or the lighting in the way that I have been. I've just been kind of playing around for the last few hours, just getting a feel for the source code. But I expect to see that the community will start making really cool mods from this game, as well as obviously ports to different systems. We're going to see things like widescreen support we're going to see things like 60 fps we're going to see this game running on a whole slew of different hardware including the vita the switch the xbox the dreamcast you name it it's probably going to be available everywhere but it will take a little bit of time for developers a to get understood and learning the source code itself and then having to build out a 
rendering layer or a rendering engine per system that they're trying to get this game up and running for. But this is pretty cool stuff and I wanted to show this off for you guys on the channel because I know people have been asking about it. And yeah, I'm very excited to see where this goes. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time decompilation or recompilation project is out and it works. And uh, you know, if you are interested in messing around with this yourself, then just check the GitHub page for instructions. It's pretty easy to set up. It's pretty easy to compile. It's also pretty easy to break the code as well if you don't know what you're doing, just in the same way that I have been. But for now, guys, we are going to leave it here for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought about this in the comments below. As always, if you liked it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.